breaking news there's been a hard collision not too far from the forbidden door and it might end up costing some money in the bank let's get into it here on wrestling with the business <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to the most high-flying commentary show in the world of professional wrestling, wrestling with the business. I am the varsity athlete, Jeremy Budet, here as always with Matthew, the professor, Lambert, and Dan, the GM of Insane Games himself, Shevland. We are one man short, but hopefully that will be fixed very, very soon. Today on the show, some very interesting news and rumors coming up related to the new collision um, and related to, um, I guess, some interesting controversies that have been going on. I'll let Dan get into that. Dan has a very interesting wrestling rant for us. Um, we're talking about how far is too far when it comes to gimmicks, some interesting newsworthy stuff there. We do a collision review. How was the show? How were the ratings? How's everything in the world of AEW? And, of course, we talk about Forbidden Door, which is coming up this weekend, and we do a preview uh, of that. So I'm going to jump right into it with our first recap, and I'm going to talk about SmackDown. Two primary, really three interesting thing, things happened in SmackDown last week. So first of all, segment one, there was a tag team gauntlet match that saw the Street Profits versus the OC versus LWO versus the Brawling Brutes versus the Pretty Deadly versus Hit Row. Wow. So for those of you that don't know, a gauntlet match is when a whole bunch of tag teams come down to the ring and basically wait Two of them go in the ring, battle it out. When there's a pin, losers go away, new guys come in. Uh, no real backstory as to how the order was decided. Would have been cool if they had done rock, paper, scissors or something. Right. They didn't do that. Hmm. Um, really made the Brawling Brutes look tough. It was Sheamus and Holland, Rich Holland. And they went the distance. They were the first ones in the ring, and they went <laughs> all the way to the end. And they basically got, uh, got um, beaten by the Pretty Deadly. So the Pretty Deadly are now the number one contenders. Yep, it was a sneaky win. So the Pretty Deadly, the distraction related and stuff. So really great match from them, though. They both looked great. Um, So the Pretty Deadly are now the number one contenders. I'm guessing we're setting up a Money in the Bank match, which hasn't officially been announced yet, but it'll be probably them going for the titles um, at Money in the Bank. Second interesting thing, we had... um, some interesting stuff in the world of the women's division where um, it's pretty clear Charlotte Flair's angling for Asuka's title and Bianca Belair is trying to stick her nose into it. It's, again, looking like another so far unannounced three-way match probably for Asuka's title. Um, I think the three of them could actually put on a really good show. I'm a little excited for it. Um, Charlotte knows how to make anybody look good, so um, no shame there. Is Charlotte the baby face or the heel now? They're angling her as a baby face, and they're angling Bel Air as a tweener. Because how does the crowd feel about that? Um, the crowd hasn't. I mean, she was on the Grayson Waller effect, and she put on a not so great promo because she's not good at playing face. But Mm. she was standing up against Bianca Bel Air, who's like, um, she's basically the Bailey. I mean, she's not giving out hugs or anything like that. But it's really tough to outface Bailey in the women's division right Hmm. now. There aren't too many women that are more Raquel Rodriguez, but someone with the kind of star power that Bianca Belair has. You just don't see it. And then probably the most interesting um, was the main event, which actually really wasn't a match. It was basically a bloodline story update. We saw Reigns with Sokoa and Heyman come out all three belts. Heyman holding two of them. You were right. Dan. And, said uh, that. Did I say and, that? Uh, did I say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, okay. <laughs> Even a blind Shevlin finds a nut every once in a while. Um, out comes Jay immediately. Basically, Jay offers an ultimatum. Either Heyman's in or I'm in. And uh, basically, they're like, hey, you know, this has nothing to do with Heyman. You know, he kind of redirects him. Jimmy comes out, of course. A lot of drama in the ring. Um, you know, the problems are cousin. Basically, Jay's being pulled between Jimmy and the bloodline. What's he going to do? So very dramatic, interesting. Uh, obviously, there's a big setup. He's going to turn on his brother. And uh, he basically um, basically resigns any super kicks Roman. So now setting up the Usos against what, I guess, the bloodline doesn't exist anymore. So they're not really a stable. Unless you count Paul Heyman, because you need at least three to have a stable. So I guess the bloodline has been f- fractured. And no, I um, would say they, I would say they still 
talk like it still exists. Yeah. No greater. I guess. I guess the bloodline is now more the story. Right. It's not necessarily the stable. It's the story, the drama associated mm-hmm. with the bloodline. I think this will forever be known as the bloodline storyline. That's how. I think known. the whole idea is Roman represents everyone in the family, even the ones you don't see on screen, like. The wild Samoans, Afa and Sika, they're part of the bloodline. Now listening to you, acknowledging him as the head of the table. That's very good of you. That's the story. Very good of you, Paul Heyman. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was a it was actually a pretty interesting show. There was some filler in the middle, but that gauntlet match was a great way to open up and um, the bloodline story's development was just wonderful. So I actually really enjoyed it. I'll give it like a three, three and a half out of five. I wasn't bored, wow. I didn't look away. It was it was it that was, might be your highest. It is my highest. That I've, yeah, usually there are two, two and a half, but I give them a three, three and a half. This was mm. a good, this was a good show. So there let's talk go. about AEW. AEW Dynamite. This whole episode was basically just building to Forbidden Door this weekend. Um, we started out the show with only four announced matches, and by the end of the show, there were ten. So <laughs> a little crowded, a little bit. And uh, I got some spoilers for tonight's Rampage. There will be an eleventh match announced as well, but. Um, lots of good matches on the show. A lot of the Japan guys were there, obviously, again, for Bindors this weekend. They were in Chicago again, which uh, Collision was in last week, but we'll talk about Collision later. Um, big takeaways from this show. The Owen Hart tournament brackets were announced for the men and the women. Uh, one, two, three, four, four matches on each side, it looks like. Um run through them quick. CM Punk versus Satoshi Kojima, which is happening at Forbidden Door. Roger Strong versus Samoa Joe. That'll be a good mm, match. Yeah. Dustin Rhodes versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Juice Robinson versus Ricky Starks. That's the men's side. The women have Britt Baker versus Ruby Soho, Nyla Rose versus Willow Nightingale, Anna JAS versus Sky Blue, and again at Forbidden Door, Athena versus Billy Starks. Now, Britt won last year. Britt won last I year. Think, yep. I think she's gonna. You think she's gonna go out? I think she's gonna go out in the first round. Yeah. It really doesn't do anything for her to win it this year. Yeah, I don't know. It's and tough. Ruby could use a, a bigger push. It might be Ruby. I'm I'm still kind of leaning towards Britt because the rest of the line. I mean, maybe Willow Nightingale might win it. She's the. They're gonna have her win it twice in a row, two years in a row. She is the best. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um. And the other big takeaway from this show was a tag team tournament to determine the number one contenders for the AEW titles was announced. They're calling it the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament. Basically, it's a WCW lethal lottery. Oh! They had the uh, the ball tumbler there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Pulling out a couple of names. They didn't announce the names right away, though. Adam Cole and MJF had an in-ring promo. Yes. Adam Cole wanted, Very good wanted a rematch for the title. Um, and MJF played it off like, man, I, I'm worried about your health. I don't want to give you a rematch. You're going to get hurt. He's such a concerning guy, you know. He's so nice and warm. Tony Schiavone gets on the mic, and right away, MJF and Cole both at the same time. Shut up, Schiavone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great. Um, but shivani announced that the first two names pulled for the tag team tournament were mjf and adam cole oh that could be fun they're gonna be a tag team (laughs) oh that could be so much fun so uh yeah that should that should be a pretty uh fun story again all the matches on the show were excellent um again setting up for forbidden door and we'll go through the lineup later on in the episode but uh, i give this episode four out of five tony shivoni is the donny from the big lebowski of that company. They're just like, shut the F up, Tony. <laughs> he gets no love. He gets no respect. Yeah, what are you going to do? He didn't get any respect back in the WCW days either. But uh, So what there. about Raw? Are we going to talk about Raw? What was the big takeaways from that show? I think only one interesting thing happened at Raw, but maybe we should address that after news and rumors. Sounds good. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, you know, talking about this week, you know, we have the debut of Collision. Um, so that, that you know, that's pretty much big on the headlines, but um, a lot going on with CM Punk. Can't so, go through a single episode without talking no, about you him. No, can, you can't. And I didn't even know about his whole shirt thing when I got here. That just even aggravates me more. <laughs> and it's like, can you just come out and walk to the ring and be a normal wrestling superstar and not have to make some kind of like statement? That's yeah, my problem. Yeah. It's always something with CM Punk. 
Um, but um, so yeah, so yeah, obviously we had the the debut of Collision. He's on the show, um, great show, and, and and so on. Um, but then we come to Wednesday night, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we start realizing that the Elite's not going to be there, and Kenny Omega's not going to be there. Pre-taped stuff. Did they have pre-taped? They had a pre-taped promo push in their Forbidden Door matches. Yeah. So um, so you know, obviously the rumor mill going around is there a lot of heat and drama going on backstage, like. And I guess now, like, um, he, you know, CM Punk had the ESPN interview, which so obviously we had everything that happened with this, this brawl in the back, you know, a while ago. And you know, a lot of stuff going around that they've signed certain things where they can't talk about it. Yes. Yeah, and I guess CM stuff. Punk's kind of been talking about it. So it's kind of like, you know, making references and making kind of, you know, right. you know, as, as any troublemaker does, there's little jabs here and there and. And so I think it's kind of starting to re- refresh up a little bit the issues going on backstage. So, so someone anonymously apparently told the dirt sheets that uh, they weren't sure. They they were told that they weren't going to have to work with CM Punk until, unless it was a pay-per-view. But then in the first week that he's back, he's here on Dynamite, which he was only on Dynamite for the first segment for right. five minutes. He cut a very quick promo. And in the promo, he's even like, I'm a collision guy. I'm not even supposed to be here, yeah, so that. let's have a match on collision this week. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but, yeah, the Elite weren't there. Kenny Omega, Adam Page, all of them, they weren't all there. Um, oh, Adam Page wasn't there either? Nope. They all they were all in that backstage pre-recorded promo. All right, so, Matt, you're an AEW guy, right? Mm-hmm. Are you, are you going to tell me there's not something going on here? I, what no, is the I'm coincidence sure there they're is. all not? I mean, there's you know there's a chance that, you know, it's Chicago. They could get booed. It's they were. CM Punk territory. Yep. You know, maybe you know, they don't want to get. So they Eddie Kingston is teaming with them, at teaming with the Elite at Forbidden Door. He came out at the end of the show to cut a promo. And as soon as he mentioned the Elite, right. the crowd started booing. They were booing when that promo was on. Um, and he was just like, yeah, I don't like him either, but I hate this guy more, so I'm teaming with right, him. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it had to do with with CM Punk. I'm sure it had to do with Chicago because they are the baby faces now. So, Is this an instance where uh, Tony Khan, AEW, and maybe more specifically the Elite are kind of shooting themselves in the foot here? Because if you think about it, there's not too many people that are tweeners on CM Punk. You kind of either love him or you hate him. And I think that... If, if I'm a member of the elite, what I want to do is I want to go in there, and if I get booed, great. That's only going to make my people more enthusiastic. So why would I avoid, like you said, unless there's some reason Tony Khan tells me not to show up, there's some kind of threat or something like that, or maybe I'm contractually obligated to stay away from him or something like well, that. Well, I wonder if there is. Like, unless something like that is in place, why wouldn't I go there, get the heat from Chicago, and be like, hey, let's... You know, let's roll with it. Like it's it's gonna put butts in seats if there's controversy. It's just it's weird. I mean, Eric Bischoff's probably rolling his eyes now. There has to be a really good reason because, especially with ticket draws being not as strong as they've been, you gotta find a way to create controversy. So, um, right. Adam Hoffman on in. Hi. What I miss? So um, we're talking about CM Punk and the drama going on backstage. Um, obviously, he's now back, mm-hmm. and this week on um, AEW we had no. Adam Page, we had no Kenny Omega, the Bucks, you know, is that a coincidence? And just so happens that CM Punk is on the program on Wednesday as well. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I think what Matt said, you know, a lot of people were told you're not going to have to work with him. And here he is back, at, you know, and rather it's five minutes or not. Like some people have a, I'm going to do the show if he's not on the show. But if he's going to be on the show, and I'm not being on the show. Like, you know, there's a lot of, I think AEW it's a high school finally locker. found themselves in the drama and the controversy that I think is either going to make them or could potentially break them. And I think uh, uh, we just talked about Eric Bischoff. He said it himself in an interview that CM Punk is going to ruin that backstage. He's going to be the end. He is the poison. Mm-hmm. And, and I think mm-hmm. he, who, he, I don't know if you saw that. He referenced somebody in WCW that was just like that. I don't want to say it was Hulk Hogan. Um, I forget. He he mentioned someone's name that, that they had, they went through the same thing on WCW, and it was like it ended up being what ended up hurting them in his, in his words. Um, so I think you know CM Punk coming back. I think it's gonna be a lot of problems, and I think you're starting to see that with people not being on the show. I think Bischoff did say too that the ESPN interview wasn't as he was actually 
uh, complimentary to how CM Punk handled it. It wasn't as bad as people were right, expecting. Right, right. So well, he was honest. You know, I mean, and you know, if you want to kind of extinguish stuff, you you just tell it like it is and be honest and. What, uh, you know the you know the sad part about you know the whole locker room genre, g- drama with uh, AEW is you know the first episode of Collision was awesome. Yeah. You know they finally AEW finally produced a show that they could be proud of um, from start to finish, and um, you know that's so you know to where you should be building off of that and. You know, be excited about that. Now we're seeing the fallout and drama of having CM Punk back in that locker room. So, um, you know, hopefully they can get it under control right. and um, yeah, I, I build think... build off of what this first episode of Collision did for them and um, move forward. But uh, I, I think everybody's got to get on the same page and understand that you know it, it's about AEW. It's not about. CM Punk or again, I think the Kenny only, Omega or whatever. The main reason he was there was just because they were in Chicago, right? Well, obviously yeah. you can't be in Chicago. I mean, it's his hometown, and you, you know, know. And, it, and it could have maybe maybe we're all overthinking everyone. You know, maybe yeah. it could be as simple of CM Punk is the Chicago guy. He's there. Let's put him on. We know Chicago's gonna boo, right? All the others, which is not you know, WWE is notorious for that. They feel like the crowd is gonna go the opposite, and then they don't put someone on or they have something certain happen like they they play the crowd game and you know maybe that was what AEW was doing I mean it's, maybe but I don't know I'm kind of thinking it's a little bit more than that it's but, like yeah. Bret Hart in Canada anytime they were in Canada yeah. he was always going to get cheered no matter what he was doing right. on TV or anything so um yeah so that that's what's going on with AEW apparently his promo on collision was completely Awful. Uh, he did yeah. not. It was not. He, it he looked it too. It he went in look. and didn't know what he was going to say. I guess he had a couple lines that he knew he wanted to say, but it was he was shooting right from the hip on that one. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone would deny that CM Punk isn't talented when it comes, especially when it comes to mic work. You know, the problem with CM Punk is what he does backstage and the issues he causes backstage. I don't think anyone would deny his ability to perform in the ring and his ability on the mic. Right. You know, it's it's all the. The luggage that comes with CM Punk, that's the problem. Um, but yeah, so then we have, um, uh, we have, uh, speaking of backstage, Ricochet had finally, now this is the first, we talked about this before the show, um, that I don't think anyone's really come out and said this, Ricochet kind of confirming that Vince McMahon is very much involved in the creative. Now, Ricochet, well, I would say he's one of them. I mean, he's not one of my favorites, but he's a guy that I, I like his personality. I think he's a company guy. Like, he needs to go out there, and he'll take the body hits. He'll take the slams. He'll take the beatings right. for WWE. I, mean, I think he's always trying to, hey, I'm going to do what I need to do to get to keep moving up the ladder. Um, we've seen him a lot in, like, the mid-card belts lately. Um, you know, will he ever be top, top belt? I don't know. Um, but... Not if it's when Jeremy doing brought, creative. Yeah, when, when Jeremy brought that up, I said to myself, "Wow, that's shocking that he would say that." Yeah, and I think it's always been sources say, or no one specific. I a think lot of speculation. Oh, he, he, big guy went over. That's clearly a sign that Vince McMahon's always there. But I think right. this is the first real time. Um, Someone speaking, by name. His his heel gimmick, by the way, is way better than his face gimmick. King Ricochet is awesome. Um, just want to say that as a side comment, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it kind of it's kind of news that isn't news. It kind of confirms what everybody already knows. But I think the fact, like you said, that it's Ricochet and that it wasn't. You think it's on purpose? I mean, no, you don't just say that. Is, I mean, no, I mean, I haven't heard the actual clip or anything like that. But my guess is that it probably was almost like an off the cuff comment, you know, that he almost got he, he might get a talking to for. Well, if um, we see the next step, what show is he on? Raw? Yeah. Or Raw? So yeah. we, if we if we see one of those uh, one minute matches where he's knocked right out, he's, I think we'll know what, what's going well, on. He's in Money in the Bank. <laughs> well, just, but they're saying they're angling L.A. Knight. They're saying everybody's kind of the whispers are that L.A. Knight's being angled for that one. But we'll see how much of a push he gets because if you can't get Ricochet over in a Money in the Bank ladder match, I mean but, that's his bread. But, but here, here's the thing, and then again, I apologize, I was late today. But you know, going to Raw, you know, with everybody in this Money in the Bank match all the low card guys what does that say to bring in logan paul and not even have him have a qualifying match yep 
you know, what does that say about Ricochet, LA Knight? Draw. Uh, well, hang on, hang on. All right, yeah, let, like, me, let me play devil's advocate here. And this leads us great. I'm glad you said yeah. that into what you got to say. And I'll let you talk, but let me, let me say one thing first, okay? I commented earlier when we were maybe halfway through the Money in the Bank matches about how none of these were interesting matches. There was no question. Yes, they were qualifiers in name only. Yeah, these were not actual matches. They were given. Okay? They were no one thought Natalia. No one thought Lacey Evans was going to be in it. So that being said, what do you got to say about Money in the Bank? <laughs> well, I mean, look, look, look at who's in there. And, and this is where, you know... What is the purpose of the Money in the Bank match? What's the purpose? To build a new star. To line up the next guy. Not only to line up, but it's, I mean, it's basically to set a future champion. I mean, I don't know. I don't have the numbers off. I wish I looked them up. I don't know what the numbers are offhand, how many people have used the Money in the Bank briefcase and didn't win the title. Is there, I know there's a, maybe one I or mean, two. It's been more with the women, but as far as the men go, it's maybe three, only three or four yeah, that didn't I, cash I, in. So there's really not, and you think of how many, it's been going on for what now, 10 years more? Yeah, WrestleMania 21 was the first one, so almost 20 it's years. It's been like 17 yeah, so, years. Okay, yeah. so you, when you look at, you know, that the likelihood, and maybe I'll go 80% likelihood, that whoever wins the money in the bank is going to be a champion. Right now, maybe those rules have changed where it's a different title now. Any title they can go for, I don't know. But let me read you off the people that are in the match. Right, okay. L.A. Knight, Ricochet, yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura, Santos Escobar, Butch, Damian Priest, and now Logan Paul. Do any of those look like future world heavyweight champions? Or universal champion. Like, do any of them. Do you see L.A. Knight, who's getting the big push right now? He's rumored to win. But still, do you really see him as the next world heavyweight champion? Yeah, but this is or how... Or beating Roman Reigns? This is how you build a guy for the next step. Yeah, but... Yeah, but what? Are we... <laughs> this is how you do it. I don't know. Ricochet? Not going to win. I hate to see. He's not a champion. You can say future star. He's not. We all know that. Okay? Shinsuke Nakamura. His time's it's, coming gone. It's L.A. Knight. It has to be L.A. Okay. Knight. Santos Damian Escobar, Priest. what? I mean, and Butch, seriously? Damian Priest, I like it, but are you going to give him the title over Finn Balor? Like, you know, maybe it causes a little uh, uh, Judgment Day problem. Do we think Seth Rollins is going to drop the title of Finn Balor at Money in the Bank? No. 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 Okay, well, there's your answer. Q Logan Paul, who... Is he going to come well, back and lose again? I, are you saying he's going to win? Well, first off, Logan Paul is one of those guys who's creating a contract just like McGregor and all that. Like, I'm guaranteed I want to look five out of the six. I'm guaranteed five wins out of the six matches that I wrestle. Like, like he's already lost the last one he's in. I doubt he'd take another loss. I mean, money is money, don't get me wrong. But he's also trying to build his fighting image and build his career. I don't think he'd take another loss. Plus, there's also the idea that it's going to draw some attention, him having the Money in the Bank briefcase, walking around for probably eight months to market it and, and show that he has it um, and come down. I, I just, before I saw the Logan Paul, I'm just looking at that and going, we can't find better wrestlers for that. And I get the idea. You need to come up with one or two things. Are you trying to crown a champion or are you trying to build a star? That's but, what it comes but, down to. But, yeah. but but here's the thing, you know, take the storylines out of it and everything they've right. done up to. This is wrestling business one oh one. You you make a match like this to see how the crowd's gonna react to whoever they react to in this match. Mm -hmm. And then what you try to do theoretically is whoever's getting the most attention in that match, regardless of who wins it, that's your next guy you're gonna try to push a little bit more to build him up a little bit more. This is just growing the business. This is what a match like this is made for. Can, can I make one comment? Okay, so let's put some numbers behind it. So there is a success rate of actually cashing in. You win it and you hold it. There's a success rate of 84.6%. Close. Mm -hmm. Pretty good, right? Three. That means three men have cashed in and lost. One is Damian Sandow. The other is Baron Corbin. Can anybody name the third? John Cena. John Cena, which ironically means that John Cena is responsible for all three because he was holding he was the title champion. when Sandow, and so it's funny I always <laughs> like to all of them. But it's an interesting point that you make. You know, you're right. They should use it to build their next champion. It's a B pay per view. 
you know, you're you're looking at fresh blood for the top guy and so and for the future. That's but I don't think they're doing it that way anymore. I mean, it used to be setting well, when, up for when, the when next you're year. Logan Paul in it. No, yeah, absolutely it, not. It used to be WrestleMania. Wasn't right? it last year that Austin Theory cashed in on the U.S. title? Well, that was my thing. Is yes. it, are you allowed to Any use title. it on mid card? Any title. Okay, so now that may change the picture a little bit. And Gunther. now Gunther. Charlotte cashed it in the year before on the NXT Women's title. Yes, Gunther. See, I, mean, I Gunther's find got a when I back. look when I look at this lineup besides Logan Paul, I think these are all mid-title guys. So I'm looking at this saying this is now, and this is where I was going to go. This is now a mid-title Money in the Bank match. It's no longer a. No, I agree. Uh, none of these. I'm sorry. Shinsuke, he's not winning the world title. I'm sorry. I mean, I think it's time. He's just he's just filling the match. Mm-hmm. L.A. Knight and Ricochet, I think, are the really two leading candidates. Damian Priest, those are three good guys that I think could be a great intercontinental, and they have been, and U.S. champion. Like I don't see them as world heavyweight and and what what we call now the undisputed universal whatever. Mm-hmm. And and but with Logan Paul coming in. I don't think Logan Paul is carrying a mid title if he were to win it. I think his but, landscape but, and his image, he's going to be but, carrying but, one of these bad boys. But, but here's here's the thing, and you, and you might be absolutely right about your assessment of all those guys, mm-hmm. but you don't know until you see them perform. That's the point yeah. of the thing. But you we, know, and you know, again, I always go back to old school stuff, and everybody rolls their eyes, but just knowing what I know of the business. All right, Bret Hart was just a tag team wrestler. Mm-hmm. All right, when he started with the WWE. He gets a shot intercontinental title against Mr. Perfect, who was a huge heel at the time, and he wins. All right, they put him over to see if he can carry the intercontinental title. Then two years later, they have him drop the intercontinental title to a sold-out Wembley Stadium to the British Bulldog. That was his test to see if he could carry it to the next level. So you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just because they're viewed it as they're viewed now, they can have one performance away from getting a push. Right. To go further. But look who, yeah. who we're dealing with, right? Roman Reigns has had the title for how long? Over a thousand days. A thousand and twenty. You got Seth Rollins and Finn Balor re- wrestling for the other title right now. And you're telling me that one of these guys is going to beat them? Well, if I'm one of these guys in that match, I'm looking at this that this is my opportunity to impress someone. Okay, let's, let's game it out here really quick. So, if... Let's just say LA Knight, because everybody's saying LA Knight's going to win. Right. He is a SmackDown guy. Right. Meaning he's going after the U.S. title, which is currently on SmackDown with Austin Theory. Mm -hmm. Which could be a good match. Which is a, um, one, it doesn't make Austin Theory look good um, if he ends up dropping the title to LA Knight. But I think that is a rivalry that the fans have been calling for for a long time. They just happen to be on the same brand. Now you've got a reason for them to feud, and you've got Austin Theory not being at the Bloodlines beck and call, which is the way that it was before. I mean, that angle kind of makes sense to me. I just don't think your point is very valid, and I think all of us want it to work that way, but that's just not the way the business is anymore. The idea of building someone's career up over the span of well, you know, I, five years, the way they did with Randy Savage, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just doesn't happen anymore. It's just not the way that the business works. Now well, it's star power. And as much as I hate to say it, and as much as I disagree that Logan Paul could carry the world championship, because I don't think he could. I think it's going to become a paper championship. That's got to be the angle they're going for if he goes over at Money in the Bank, because they're not going to put a U.S. Right. championship on it. I'll just say, and, and this is why you'll, you'll see guys jump to to an AEW or an right. Impact, because, you know, again, what is that? What does that say to you as a talent if Vince McMahon's like, all right, I got all you guys. Well, I'm just going to throw Logan Paul in here just because I'm nervous. It says it's, we can't sell tickets. He yeah. wants mainstream. Well, I actually, yeah. isn't Logan Paul more of a Triple H guy? I think Triple H loves e- Logan either Paul. Way, either, either way. way. What, what, does that say, what, what does that say to well, you? Right. Well, you know, I, think, I think they pinned themselves in a corner here. Because like you said, if you get, if you give LA Knight the victory, why don't you just have Logan Paul take another loss? And, his, and, you know, and we all know... That WWE loves their UFC uh, personalities I mean, that come in and their mixed fighting personnel. You're right, they like to pump them up. You know, here's another thought. This is a B-level pay-per-view. And if I'm Logan Paul, I want a WrestleMania win. I yeah. want a Survivor Series win. I want a, I want a well, big win. Well, this is going to lead to that if he wins. Wins. But, but that's But that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, let, let the guys perform. Right. He's going to take it's the suitcase B, and a, run it, off it, for six months? It's, it's a B pay-per-view. Let them perform. But I'm just, I guess my point in all this, to finish up, this, I, I'm just tired of being insulted 
And when I mean insulted, it's like you have Roman Reigns who's had the title for a thousand days. People like Edge can't beat him. Seth Rollins can't beat him. Uh, Brock Lesnar, um, Cody. Cody Rhodes, Finn Balor, uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the list goes on. But you're going to tell me one of these guys right here is going to win the money in the bank and go on and beat one of them? Like, are you kidding me? Like, it's just not, none of these guys. One of these guys is our future of our industry right here. But yet, all these other guys that you have lined up right here, none of them can take the title off of Roman Reigns. And now you have to yeah, introduce they a whole new title they just to get around that. They haven't done the work for any one of these guys up to this point right. to make it so they can And then you throw that. in Logan Paul. Like, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing now? Now you throw this, now you throw that wild card in. And this guy, it, it, he signs a contract that guarantees him wins, and now you throw him in there. So it, it's yeah. just like the whole match is, like, what's the point of this? That said, side note, you guys keep saying it's a B pay-per-view. Before we had this conversation, I really don't think it's that bad. Looking, I mean, you have some. Uh, I'm not. Well, no, I mean, they, the they matches say, don't really look. They're actually somewhat intriguing. Right. I mean, we we'll, just mean it's not. I, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, like, they're actually for once, they, for once yeah. they have a decent card. Like, it's really yeah, not that bad. And, and why is that? Because they're going to London. Yeah. And they true, need to right. be big. True. They need to be big in London. All right. Well, that's the rain. I, the money. The, it's. It's. It, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what the purpose of this match is. Are we? Are we trying to crown a new U.S. Champion, or are we trying to crown a? This match used to be about crowning the next world champion, and now we've come down to this. Yeah, I think anyone who wins is going to be going after Seth if they're going for the top title, yeah. and they won't win it. Yeah, that's my prediction. If they go after it. All right, let's um, yeah, let's move on a little bit here. So, um, this was a topic we had initially intended to talk about last week, but this one kind of got lost in the echo a little bit, and we've seen a little bit of color and development in this story. So, a week and a half ago now, two dynamites ago, there was an excellent match, a curtain jerk, between MJF and Adam Cole. It was ended up timing out after 30 minutes, but during the match, MJF took the show on the road, as it were, <laughs> Went out into the crowd and, as MJF is wont to do, exchanged some words with a fan that happened to be leaning over a rail. And apparently, he was attempting to reach up and smack the hat off of the fan in a very classic heel move. And he missed and ended up smacking the fan in the face and knocking his glasses off of his head. <laughs> and normally, I would think you would just kind of think, oh, shake it off, throw a free t-shirt at the guy, have somebody shake his hand and sign right, a couple autographs for him or whatever. Society. Right. <laughs> but this comes on the heels in some context here. Four months ago, during the Iron Man match with Daniel Bryan, he did something... Brian Danielson. Sorry, Brian Danielson. Sorry, I didn't mean to dead name him. Totally different people. <laughs> totally different guys. Uh, did something very similar where he basically... What was the kid, like eight? Yeah, eight or nine. There was like an eight or nine-year-old kid that... I don't even know if he said anything bad to him, but he basically stole his mother's drink and dumped the drink on top of the kid, <laughs> which is bad enough in the fact that it's a shoot and not a work, but as it turns out, people found out like a week later that he actually dumped tequila on the kid. <laughs> the drink his mother was holding was tequila. So I guess the question becomes, especially in the age of social media where we're breaking the fourth wall... You know, kayfabe's kind of been shattered, but yet some people are still trying to kind of keep it together, kind of leverage that kayfabe is broken, but this is my real personality. Uh, Lacey Evans is doing it. Uh, MJF likes to do it a lot, especially the heels like to do it. You know, how far is too far? What level of, you know, there's videos on the internet popping up of MJF, you know, making fun of people in wheelchairs and stuff at, at signings and you know, I'm just wondering at what point does your world champion become a liability? Because we've seen some awkward press conferences after with him and Tony Khan sitting next to each other, and he's basically taking a dump on, on Tony mm -hmm. Khan, and Tony Khan's just sitting there looking really upset about it. I mean, at what point does the work become a shoot? You know, what's too far? I mean, if you're Tony Khan, there's not, and there's no reports of him getting any kind of, you know, at least in the world of... of Football, if something like that happens, there's a fine or something that occurs, right. right? And sometimes there'll be, like, suspensions that occur, like we saw with the locker room brawl last year in AEW. Nothing of that. Nothing, no fines, no no time off, suspensions, anything like that. I mean, what, especially in the advent of the question about violence, the producer getting released after the domestic violence charges come DJ through. Yeah. Exactly, yes. You know, uh, the Britt Baker t-shirt and the controversy that came out of that, the domestic assault thing. I mean, I mean, what 
if I'm Tony Khan, what am I doing? Is this a work or is this a shoot? I don't know, man. With M, we've with come a MJF. long way from Brian Pillman pulling a gun on Stone Cold. <laughs> with MJF, a, really, I mean, did you, part, did you see the? Well, I'm not to cut you off, man. Did you see the uh, Doink the Clown? Uh, I haven't Dark watched it. Yet. I haven't watched no. it. Yet. I mean, <laughs> like this because uh, there's a part in the story with him and Hacksaw that kind of plays into this. They were a tag, and um, you know, back in the territory days, um, and Hacksaw, the, you know, their heel tag team, Hacksaw's, you know, walking out of the ring, and someone sucker punches Hacksaw. So Hacksaw, you know, doing what you do back in the day, took a shot at the guy, knocked him on his ass. Well, Matt Barn comes up behind Hacksaw. And boots this dude in the face, causing him to lose his eye. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, like, so just hearing about this, that I because I I watched it this morning, and I was just like, wow, it's still going on. Today. There's this, a lot of old school he, in he, MJF. Yeah, I mean, yeah and, I, and that's the point I was gonna make. He, he's just doing old school heel stuff. Um, but in this day and age, but does that's that the problem. Work? It's 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 this day and age. Is that a lot? Yeah. I think it works up until the point where you're dumping drinks on kids. Or smacking a guy upside the yeah, head. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Uh, uh, unless, too far. Yeah. unless they're a plant. Well, you know, that, unless I mean, unless they're different. a plant. Yeah. These yeah. are not plants. These are not plants. Which yeah. is something yeah. Tony Khan could easily do, but in the world of dirt sheets, with he has done it with other people. In the worlds of cell phones, like that's gonna get out, and it's gonna destroy your brand if it's like, right. yeah, MJF smacked him across the face. But as it turns out, mm-hmm. it's one thing for Tony Khan to come along and offer the kid a hundred dollars and Britt Baker's who, signature. Who got yeah. fired and, for that? Didn't someone say something or do something to a fan? They got fired. WWE. Remember, and they said, "Oh, I was just doing character." And they ended. I oh God, who was it? I remember they were going through the stands, going through, and they said something to somebody. Or someone says something, and they said something back, and WWE fired them. And he was like, "I'm just, I was acting as character." It wasn't, it wasn't Ty Dillinger, was it? No. Oh, that's like the David Schultz. Situation where he slapped the shit out of oh, the yeah. reporter. John Stossel. John yeah. Stossel. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Someone. I, I forget. It was. It was David like maybe like five, <laughs> five, six years ago. They got fired. WWE fired them for saying something that they, I guess was uh, offensive. But I guess they were just in character to somebody. And and someone said something. They shot something back. And and I guess they got it picked up on the mic or something. They ended up getting fired. But oh, I can't think of who. Yeah. It is. As far as MJF, I mean that's. Him being that heel twenty four seven is what makes it believable. Yeah. But again, and you have to do that. You almost have to be that personality. And I think if he's dumping the drink on a grown man's head, they won't care. But because he did it to a kid, that's that's crossing the line. I think. I think it's kind of uh, funny to be I, honest. I, I mean, it's funny. I mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously I dump, dumping funny. you know tequila on the kid is is yeah. is, is. I mean, if, but if it was water or a soda, I mean, let's not forget. You know, like. You know, million dollar man, the famous promo where he had the kid b- dribbling the basketball. You can dribble it thirteen times. I'll give you a hundred dollars. The kid gets to twelve and he kicks the ball away from him. <laughs> I mean, you know, um, you know, Ric Flair, uh, Hurricane. You remember he used to do the Bret Hart thing where you give the toy mask to the kid in the front row. Yeah. Ric Flair running over, ripping it off the kid's head. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know I mean, like, it's classic wrestling. I mean, but again, like Jeremy said, in today's age, it's like. Okay, can I just say... Razor thin line. <laughs> a little bit of context here. So I was just looking this up while you were talking. So <clears throat> because because this is a drinking game, and I have an opportunity to mention CM Punk's name again. So this happened in 2012 in Sacramento with CM Punk. So CM Punk wrestled Vince McMahon on Monday Night Raw, went up into the stands, and a fan, while on the stairs, kind of pushed him. And CM Punk backhands him. In the stands, okay? We talked about this day and age. So this is about 10, 11 years ago, right? Okay. The guy finds, after the show, meets CM Punk outside by security, by the security line, and confronts him, and CM Punk knocks him him on his ass, like you might might find. Now, WWE released a statement afterwards saying, and this is a direct quote, (laughs) WWE regrets that proper security measures were not in place. (laughs) That's the regret. And CM Punk apologizes for reacting in the heat of the moment. I could never imagine. That was but a mere 11 years ago. I could never imagine WWE or AEW doing something like that. Funny context, too. When the kid had the tequila 
dumped on him. Yeah. They, you know, laid out the red carpet for him, signatures and, for, and toys yeah, and t-shirts you know, and stuff. Even if it wasn't tequila, they probably should have done that. The you know? dude gets smacked in the face. Yeah. They don't even acknowledge that. Well, it I mean, things happen. <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> I mean, first time. Things happen. I mean, first off, one could argue that it may or may not have been that guy's fault. You know, they, you, if you cross the line, or you touch a superstar, you're gonna get smacked. Yeah. I mean, but a kid with obviously with alcohol getting dumped down, that's a whole different. You know. They're, they're, yeah. You know. And I mean, listen, it's not like. But it's not like happen, MJF though. knew right, it was right. tequila. Right, yeah. But still. I think it's funny. I think it, I think it goes to his image. I think that you know. I think him. People watching it at home are probably got a good laugh back. Well, that, yeah. that guy's a well, fucking I, I think I think the wrestling business is missing out on fan interaction. I mean, probably one of my favorite things in the world to watch is that um, that cage match NWO and I think uh, Roddy Piper was in it and the, the kid, kid into the sting in. <laughs> makeup. Yeah. Climbs the cage and jumps in, and Hogan starts beating the shit out of him. And then all of a sudden, Macho Man, out of nowhere, runs across the ring like he's going to murder the guy and jumps on him. <laughs> it's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> and that what that guy got was a, a night in jail. He didn't get an autograph <laughs> and a couple black eyes. <laughs> well, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens next. I think inevitably in the next couple of months. I think they pro- he probably got a firm talking to with the kid. Mm-hmm. And a couple of months went by, and things started getting <laughs> relaxed, and now he did something else, so he'll probably quiet down. He'll get another talking to from Tony Khan, and then things will quiet down, and then all of a sudden it'll be a problem again. Um, we had the first episode of Collision we this did. week. Let's consult with our our AEW correspondent, Matt Lambert. Uh, how was it? The ratings, maybe you can share with us what the ratings were. 816,000. Which is amazingly close to the 832 that Side, Dynamite gets. All of them were week, pretty yeah. good, real quick. All mm-hmm. the ratings are pretty good this week. So I don't know if it's something, you know, there's a lot of storylines going on. I mean, but, you know, AEW and, uh, was up for the week. You had Raw was up. You had SmackDown was up. Rampage was up. So everyone, NXT, NXT way, way up. NXT way up. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's good storylines going on or some a lot of people, you know, Seth Rollins showed up on NXT. So a lot of stuff kind of going on this week. So... Side note: All the shows were up pretty much this week, but so, yeah. they got to compete yeah. with Collision debuting. So Collision was stuff really good. On. It was yeah. a really good episode. Um, Listen, you you had uh, Jim Cornette and Bischoff singing its praises. That's a big deal. They but, are on yeah. opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Typically. <laughs> um, Particularly with AEW. Yeah, and the be- the main the main issue with it was it actually felt different from Dynamite. Like I don't know exactly what it was, but it definitely felt like you're watching a different show. Which is to what its they, benefit. It's what they needed, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, saw the return of Andrade, who won a match using his wife's finisher, the figure eight. That was cool to see. Miro returned. Um, had the, the main event with CM Punk and FTR against uh, Bullet Club. That was a great match. It was all around. Just excellent, excellent show. Are they incorporating... I mean, it's early... But do we think that there are plans to incorporate story? That's the one critical thing that everybody keeps saying is there's I mean, not enough story. I, I would think so, especially, again, as much as we rag on them, CM Punk does know how to tell a good story. I mean, now that they've split the roster, again, uh, to your point, make the best quality product you can, but with the roster getting as crowded as it is, maybe this allows for a little bit more space. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are spreading things out. I mean, MJF is supposed to be on Rampage tonight, yeah. which is something that's never, never happened, happened, like, ever. Luchasaurus won the TNT title on, on the first episode of Collision, and Christian Cage celebrated like he was the one who won it. So there's a story right there. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have a title change. I think Collision, I think why, the, the, I think it, it feels so different. It wasn't as hectic as... You know what they're used to. It wasn't so crazy. You know, I mean, it was more of like an actual established, it, it a nice pace moving show. Yeah. It, it looked professional. It looked yeah. like a polished professional product, which you know at times Dynamite doesn't. Yeah, they still issue. do have a lot of production issues. You know? Yeah, and it, and uh, I mean, this is goes back to what I've been saying since the start of the show about AEW. You know, they you have this awesome watch. They put a great show on. Good for them. Can they do it again? And consistency is always their issue. You know, they're selling out. You know, they're doing great ticket sales with this Wembley show. All right. Will they be able to do something like that again? Is That's the always the issue with when it comes to AEW. So it's like, let's watch, uh, see what happens over the next few weeks to see if it was just everybody checked in because it was something, you know, a, diff- a different flavor. And 
Are they going to come Look, back? Let's see what the ratings are four weeks from now on Collision. I think right. that I think that's the grading point. You know, let's um, see where we are a month from now and really. Because Eric, Eric Bischoff made the point on his podcast because he did actually a separate review. He did an extra podcast this year on Collision uh, specifically, and you know he is all the praise that he gave Collision. He still made the point that you know when he had a uh, SmackDown debut on Fox, you know that well, two million viewers, and then the next week it was barely half that and then just kept going down from then you know people didn't show up so for, for the for, for the uh, smackdown fox premiere subsequent episodes yeah so yeah so the I episodes thought they were still over two million no yeah that was a long time ago they moved yeah. to fox that's 2.5 this week yeah so really quick tickets for collision that chicago show they had 90 just over 9200 tickets the second episode, they've sold 2,500. The third episode is still under 900 tickets sold. That's in uh, Hamilton, Ontario. That was a big arena. Only 9,000? It looked full. Looking, unless they did a good they job. Had, they had like triple tiers going yeah. up, but I'll yeah. bet you there was nothing camera side. I'll you think you. so? Yeah, I was looking, they had like, yeah, they're like three tiers up. And I mean, I'm they, like, wow, I'm like, that's a good crowd, but 9,000? They have a similar setup to WWE does where basically a third of the arena is just totally closed down. The screen takes up a, the screen a good portion. portion. And they've got the double entrances, the heel and the face entrances. Yep. I mean, people are going, I see a lot of back and forth on social media about, oh, like, ticket sales are going up. Like, Punk is really having an impact in the last, you know, week or so. People have been going, a few days, people have been going on about it. And I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm like, yeah, it was at 2,500, and now it's at 3,200. Like, it's an 8,000-seat stadium, guys. These are not, yeah, they're better, but these are not good numbers. Like, you know, if you can't sell 1,000 tickets in okay. Hamilton, Ontario for WWE, like, there's a problem. And I'm wondering, because, you know, it used to be that you'd cross borders. But in the age of COVID, that's not quite so common as it was before. Hamilton's pretty close to the border with the U.S. You could get some people from mm -hmm. the United States driving a few hours over. But now the market's just saturated because you're going from Windsor to Hamilton to Ottawa uh, to, way too to Toronto. Saturated. And, and uh, you know, back to the, the CM Punk point, I, I really think you need to take that factor out. I, I really don't think, you know, other than if you're doing anything in Chicago, I really don't think the CM Punk factor really matters anything. So it'll anymore. be interesting to see because I think... You know, if the ratings stay high, but the ticket sales don't respond, that's a very interesting conundrum if you're someone like Tony Khan. Yeah. How do you address I mean, if you can't sell a thousand tickets, how do you even make that look good? You, I think mm -hmm. you brought this up. If, if you only sell 1,500 tickets in an 8,000 seat stadium, you can't even lie to make that look good. You can't even upgrade everybody to the right side and put them in premium and put them next to the ring and adjust your camera. Like... At a certain point, there's there's not enough tricks. To Turn off yeah. the lights to all the upper decks and just keep like the camera stationary. And, 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 and like, even still, you, you know, you know, we're just talking about sales. I mean, like, how many tickets did they actually give away for free for this thing? I was say, they're gonna be open to them. Come on because, in, uh, come they're, on. They're, they're, their ticket yeah. packages are nuts. I think, yeah. I actually, I think Dave Meltzer did say some of those shows they were. I don't know if he was being sarcastic or not, but they said they were doing like. Groups of four for like twenty bucks a piece or something. Less like that. than that. Yeah. Less than that. Less yeah, than and that. and they had like radio shows, you know, be like, you want free tickets to AEW? You know, be caller number two. And when <laughs> two, they were three, four, they were five, me like, uh, how many tickets do you want? Hey, the first ten people got a bunch call. of them. You know. Yeah, it's it's. Such a good product. It's such, all right, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Forbidden Door is this weekend. AEW. Yep, this Sunday. Um, we've got a lot of names we know. We've got a lot of names maybe we don't know. Um, let's start. So Brian Danielson versus uh, Kazuchika Okada. Kazuchika. Wow. Here I am trying to over announce. I'll let you guys read these names off. Kazuchika Okada. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing that's going to be the main event. That's going to be a phenomenal match. This is, it's basically just bragging rights. Who's the best wrestler in the world? Um, moving on, IWGP US Championship, Omega versus Osprey. Osprey's holding the championship right now. No, Omega is. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right, Omega is. I think Osprey's going to win. I was going to say, Osprey's one of the best. This is... Not, um, it's not an AEW championship. I mean, if you're going to have a championship, change hands. I mean, we don't think Jungle Boy is going to win the World Heavyweight Championship against Sonata, right? So no. it's going to be Will Ospreay. Is this going to be the championship that changes hands? I think so. 
It'd be a hell of a match. Mm-hmm. Will Ospreay's amazing. And this will be their second match. They had one a couple months ago that was a barn burner. Um, I read something on the next match, um, which is the AEW World Heavyweight Championship, MJF versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, you know, Tanahashi was one of kind of the untouchables for Japanese wrestling, like guys that can't lose no matter where they are. Mm-hmm. But last year at Forbidden Door, he went up against John Moxley. They had a pretty good Donnie Brook, I'd say. Yep. And he lost. And I think since then, he's kind of been on his way out the door. So I'm wondering, with that leaking, does that do anything to the match? Does that make MJF look like a paper champ going up? I mean, I don't think anyone thought he was going to drop his title to someone from from Japan from that promotion. Yeah. But does this kind of make it look even worse when you've got somebody that basically is being put up there to to lose, you know, a fall guy? I think Tanahashi is still a name. It'd be it'd be similar to like going up against Sting. You don't think Sting at this point is going to win a world title, but he's still got that name value. It's a draw. Here in the U.S., it's a draw? Or are they trying to sell for pay-per-views hard, overseas? For the hardcore audience, it is, absolutely. I think overseas, they're so... I mean, they don't see them as often as you can see them here. Right. So Sting showing up in London, that's probably a draw. It is interesting, because if I'm AEW, and obviously I have Ring of Honor or whatever, but this could be an interesting litmus test to see who does well with the United States audience. Like, do we want to bring somebody over here? Obviously, a very close relationship between... Um, you know, Japan Pro Wrestling and uh, Ring of Honor, I mean, a lot of the other brands, there's a lot of mm-hmm. intermingling between. It, I don't see a lot of that. I see a lot of basically trying to create a faux WrestleMania for the Japanese promotion. And I would think they would maybe want to use it as a development if you're trying to angle somebody for maybe an AEW run, which would be the big time for these guys. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they don't want to do that. Maybe they're happier in Japan. Seems like a lot of U.S. guys go to Japan and they kick ass and they have a really good time. Is uh, the World Heavyweight Championship match even worth talking about? Sonata versus Jungle Boy? <laughs> yeah. It, Poor Sonata. If I'm Sonata, I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why this match was made. I mean, it should be a decent match, but... Doesn't make IWGP look very look very good. Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this is like one thing... Sometimes I think that this is what causes AEW... Some, like, there's just a lot going on here. Look at all those championship titles, right, in, in one in one little paragraph. And there's more. And there's more. <laughs> um, uh, probably the most dramatic match is going to be the, 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 what do we want? Jericho, Guevara, Suzuki versus Sting, Darby Allin, and, and a mystery Which we will guy. find out on this week's collision. And yeah. I think we're going to, I mean, it's basically what? We think it's the, the Jericho-Guevara drama is going to drown out. Yeah, I, I expect um, Sting and Darby's team to win this one. This will be an official Great face Great comes out of retirement. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I thought at first. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to be Naito, though. Yeah. This will be an official face turn. For Sammy? Yeah, I think so. And, and it'll yeah. lead to their singles match. I don't. I, we were talking about it last week. Sting versus Jericho. I don't think they're going to do singles. This is. Yeah. I think this is just going to be at this th- six man. Moxley, Yuta, and uh, Claudio. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Kanosuke uh, Takeshita. I was going to say Claudio Castagnoli. Oh, that too. <laughs> as American as that just sounded. Takeshita, Umino, and uh, the Elite, which is Hangman Adam Page and the Bucks, uh, Eddie Kingston, and Ishii. Um, this sounds like chaos to me. Yeah, this is going to be um, ridiculous. The, the whole thing is chaos. I, I, I can't even get over here's it. Here's what's interesting to me. No stipulations on anything. No. Across yet. the board. They're just straight matches. Straight matches, yeah. God, you're right. God only knows. They seem to be playing in this last minute. But... Um, I don't know. It, it... That's that's why I'm, I'm kind of... Like, you know, I'm going ahead on you guys here. And I'm, I'm looking at this thing and like... It's like unorganized. I, I think this forbidden door concept is awesome, involving New Japan. But w- what point does the Owen Hart tournament have to do in the concept of this pay per view? Because they're in Canada. It's because they're. Oh, in Canada. is it? All right, I didn't yeah. know they were in Canada. Yeah, and they've yeah. relegated it to the to the pre show. I mean, well, the women's the match. women's match. Yeah. They've relegated That's to the pre show. So. Uh, the International Championship, Orange Cassidy versus Zack Sabre Jr. and Shibata and Garcia, Daniel Garcia. Um, Orange Cassidy is going to hang on to that title. I don't I think, think there's so. any question there, right? Because Zack Sabre Jr. is the New Japan Strong TV Champion. Shibata is the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. 
So, yeah, I think Orange Cassidy's hanging on to it. You're putting a bunch of guys in the ring with championships to win another championship. Yep. Um, then the AEW Women's Championship, Storm versus Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale is the New Japan Strong Women's Champion. So, so I think Tony's hanging on to it. You know, it was funny. The first episode of Falls Count Anywhere, I had I asked Chad GPT to book a AEW versus WWE dream. And it kind of feels like that's what they're trying to do here with New yeah. Japan. It's all fantasy matches. Fantasy it's book. not going to go over well because of the market that we're in. I think I think they're going to end up losing in both markets. I think Japan's going to be like Orange Cassidy. Who the heck is Orange Cassidy and why do I care? And we're going to be like Katsuyori Shibata. Who the hell is that? Like, why do I care? I think you're going to end up losing both by trying to split the baby. Yeah, this show is definitely for hardcore fans. That's why they did it. That's why they started it last year. And the men's Owen Hart Cup tournament match, CM Punk versus Satoshi Kojima. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm putting my CM Punk's going to win that. You think he's winning the whole thing? It, it, dude, oh. did you see his tights on uh, Collision? No. It, it, they mocked Bret Hart's outfit. He didn't look like he was in that much shape either. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else. He, he never looked has very, been. I think he was yeah, overweight. They, yeah. He did not the, look in good. The no. Owen Hart is supposed to be, the Owen Hart Cup is supposed to be like an up and coming. It's supposed to be another yeah, no, opportunity for a mid level guy to work his way up. If CM Punk wins CM that. CM Punk's been up Bret Hart's ass for the last two years. I bet you he wins it. If he wins, I'm going to be really mad. Um, and again, his his tights on Collision look just like his uh, Bret Hart's old wrestling what, tights. What, is, what, is, what does really mad look like? Because you get pretty mad about some other things. Like, really mad? When you and I <laughs> are... <laughs> like, picture <laughs> this just red. When you and I were at about... When we were arguing, I was at about six. <laughs> you don't want me to go to ten. Um, Can we bring up Amazon again? I'm gonna, yeah. yeah, apparently they're leaning towards uh, Disney and FX, but... Uh, the fat lady hasn't sung yet. So I don't, yeah. which I really don't like that either. So I, I just oh um, come on, you, Monday Night Raw than every Simpsons ever. Come on. <laughs> I I, I a, think that is a I'm Monday sorry. night to cherish. I think the USA Network is a very good home for Monday Night Raw. Update: Adam's personal life very boring. <laughs> <laughs> Not much going on in Adam's neck of the woods. Uh, and then the pre the pre show, the women's Owen Cup Hart tournament, the first match, Athena versus Billy Starks. Athena, yeah, yeah, Athena, no question. I think she's still ROH Women's Champion. And the spoiler for tonight's Rampage, Adam Cole versus Tom Lawler is getting added to the card too. Um, before we close things out, that's for Bindor. Before we close things out, I just want to tease: we have Money in the Bank coming up um, a week from tomorrow, a week from Saturday. Um, we uh, are not, thank God, going to be casting lots and placing bets and predictions on the Forbidden Door. <laughs> um, but we will be doing that for Money in the Bank, as everybody at the table is quite familiar with that particular lineup. And we will be premiering our own belt here on Wrestling with the Business. Our own, uh, well, I don't know. They have winners and... Loser takes all. They have losers, and this is going to be our loser belt. All so... Right. Um, Whoever finishes first gets bragging rights, and whoever finishes last uh, will get the belt and will be our champion uh, until right. the next uh, prediction. So we'll be <laughs> unveiling that belt at next week's episode. Ooh, um, see this. Is Triple H coming? This is going to be a. This is going to be Make very. Make sure we title him correctly. This is going to be very <laughs> fun. <laughs> as I hope, husband. you know, I'm hoping yeah. that this belt can eventually become a custom work of art. So I'm. I feel like every time somebody new wins the belt, they should add their own custom, uh, art, their own custom piece to it. Get the spray and, paint. And, uh, yeah, we can uh, mm-hmm. do some really creative and fun stuff with it. So I'll be premiering that next week, and we will be doing our Money in the Bank predictions, and we will be doing a Forbidden Door recap and all the usual stuff that you guys have become accustomed to. So please like, comment, share, subscribe, follow us at Wrestle with Biz on Twitter. Please check out Falls Count Anywhere on Monday this week. We are uh, testing the uh, professor on some wrestling moves. Um, which should include some great descriptions for people. So if you've ever been interested, you ever see something crazy in the ring, you do, don't know what it's called, check us out. You might have an idea of uh, what that is, and we can share that with you. And uh, if you keep watching, we'll keep wrestling with the business. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>